Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. This is going to be the Twitch recap episode from last week, which I was not able to run. But thankfully, Cat Blue Flame over on Twitch was able to cover for me. So uh, without further ado, I will turn you over to her. Hey guys, thank you for that lovely introduction, Crash. Uh, as he says, my name's Cat Blue Flame. I've just started streaming on Twitch. And um, yeah, this is the recording from the Twitch session on Wednesday when I took over Crash's stream. He gave me a little list of rockets that he would like, or, or missions that he'd like fulfilled, and I decided to do what I thought might make the biggest rocket, as I like big rockets. As you can see here, uh, it looks like we got the bottom of a DN6 series. So, we're, we're going with one of the big rockets. This is just me messing around with a few settings. And in just a moment, we'll have a zoom out, and quite possibly another zoom out. And we will see what we have built. As you can see here, it's quite a big monster. Very tall, very heavy. Weighs around about 6,500 tons. And, um, yeah, big rocket. So, let's see what powers this uh, second stage. We're here powered by a nuclear engine. I thought that Crash needed to join a nuclear engine race. He seems to have avoided it so far. And I feel like there are many things that, that Crash could really achieve using the nuclear engines. So, this is also my first foray into using them. Uh, oh, it looks like, just checking on the weight there, we're about 6,000 tonnes. So, a little bit wrong on my estimate there. And let's have a little look at the payload. So we pull the fairings off, and we've got a little uh, transfer stage here, about 3,000 metres a second in there. And a lander with a rover attached to the top. Uh, a fairly simple sort of payload, fairly simple sort of rocket to be honest. And um, yeah, and with all this Delta V, the mission that I decided to accept was a mission to Mercury. So we want to put this science rover on Mercury and get get some uh, different science from all the different biomes. And uh, I'm also looking at be or or Crash would be able to also send this direct to not just to Mercury but to the moons of Jupiter and any non-atmospheric um, uh, body in the solar system. So I think in just a moment I'll pop these fairings back on. And I use like a split fairing style, as you can see here. It's something I do in quite a few of my rockets. It's something I very much enjoy. And, um, yeah, just another look, little look at the rocket. And as you can see there, we've got 28,850 dV, uh, or meters a second. So plenty of dV for us. Uh, plenty of uh, margin for error for Crash if he struggles to fly this monster. So hopefully that will do good. Um, and um, yeah, in, in, during the stream we, we, we had a lot of fun. Uh, we start with a launch up to orbit, just to check that this can get into orbit okay. And then after that we solve what seems to be a large problem. <laughs> large being key word with this rocket. Um, for the rest of the stream. So, I think we're just having a little look round. Just, just explaining a few things about the rocket and in just a moment I shall hand over to old me or new me I'm not entirely sure how how the old me new me thing works but I'll hand over to uh, what I'll, I'll call old me and we'll get this thing up into orbit it's a giant dick help us out here yep yeah, I I exactly. J just blame it on somebody else, Pulsified. That 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 always works. Jeepers. And yeah, things are a little bit laggy, and we're going to be deep in the yellow, if not into the red. There we go. Physics have loaded in. It does a bounce. Full throw. Does a big bounce. Whoa! Nearly crashed. Which would have been appropriate. Hey, um, let's get old Mecco Jebo going with my ascent guidance. Do, 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 do. 
Mako Jebo. Uh, edit the ascent path. Everything's massive. The boxes are massive. And everything's massive. Okay, so. Zero. One thirty fifty. Yes. Whew. Are you guys ready? Do you want me to do it from zoomed in here so we get the full effect? Or shall I zoom way out? Because I usually deafen myself with this monster. Engage autopilot. A waiting lift off. Yes, I know Scorpio and I kind of uh, don't worry pulsified it far and exceeds that uh, turn end altitude it, it, it goes zoom out and zoom in in the field of view how do you do that I didn't know you could do that anyway I say we just fire this monster and see what happens only around about Alt zoom. Oh. Wow, I didn't realize that's a thing. Oh, that's so cool. Ah. Well, there you go. Whoop. Okay. When you're ready. Three, two, one. Wins. Oh, that wasn't too bad. Oh, that's because we're alt zoomed all the way out. And the engines come up. And lift off. Yeah, no, this is true. And still lift off. Ooh, things have got a bit laggy. Has the stream got laggy for you guys? Okay. I think... I think the stream might be lagging. Oh, I think it's catching up. There we go. Yeah, it's choppy like the North Sea. I think it's catching up though, Wookie. I think it just had a bit of a moment on launch. This is weird, because I'm like, zoomed way out, but then not zoomed out. I like it. Because if you zoom in, it's just too loud to, like, look at the rocket. I've been doing all my launches, like, from, like, over here. <laughs> I can't see the rocket at all. So, this is really cool. Better now? Awesome. Cool. Let's watch the KSC disappear behind us. Oh, cinematic. One minute one minute in and we haven't even reached a hundred meters a second. Not a problem, Pulsified. Thank you very much for turning up. Um if you can turn up later on, then that's fine. If not, don't worry about it. Really really pleased to see you anyway. And uh yeah. Go do what you need to do. It does sort of look more like a helicopter shot. You're right. Though, I think I'm going through cloud at the moment. Because it's all dark and stuff. Uh, are you going to... There we go. Everything happens so slowly with this rocket. Okay. 120 meters a second. 2,400 meters up. Gravity turn has started. Uh, uh. 
Did not mean to grab that. Yeah, I think we're in the bank of clouds at the moment. Oh, look at that power! One thing I do like about the way Crash did this is the way these end up in like a diamond. The DN6 to me is very pleasing and it's not that many parts. Like even the standard DN6 is not that many parts. They're just big and strong. Okay, everything's pretty nominal so far. It's a drone shot. <laughs> uh, total parts on this uh, payload not including DN6. Um, I can't remember, actually. It's not. It's not a huge, huge amount. I think it's around about 126 or something like that. 120 something parts. So it's not a huge, huge amount, but uh, I I tried just to see if it was, you know, crashes save that was slow for me, or whether it was the fact that I was launching some sort of giant nipple rocket from hell, and um, yeah, even with a small rocket, I was still going slow, so. It's just my computer struggling with Crash's mega save. He might he must be like hacked into NASA's servers or something to be able to run it so smooth. But it's good. Like I said though, everything does take a long time with this. A very long time. I mean, have you seen that burn? <laughs> 32 minutes of fuel in this tank. Uh, well, you know what else is a cylinder with a tapering top and then a little nipple shaped volume right at the very tip? Um, no. I'm not sure I want to know. Coming from you, Wookie, I'm not entirely sure I want to know what it is. But then I kind of do. So, with my testing, I don't think the problem is the processor. I think the problem that I have... It's a word you said the other day, actually. Is it? Uh, we'll just let the launch go for now. Okay. Oh, look at that. That's like a proper shot that you get of a rocket leaving through, like, the telephoto camera, you know? I should just, like, jiggle it about a bit. There you go. Ah, yes! Well done, Nimmin. And also, hi! Um, okay, no worries. Chill out my big rocket. It's big. Okay, not a problem. Uh, 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 I, I, he can't hear me, so... Somebody type cat said okay, no worries. Do thy bidding. <laughs> <coughs> Wookie's gonna type, that's not good enough. Cat says you're a... Y y you've betrayed us. Ah, thank you, Wookie. That's beast. I like this camera mode. I didn't know about that. See, this is a great thing about playing KSP for you guys. I learned so much. Right, so we are 30 kilometers up. Well, 26. 
going 700 meters a second so what's going to happen with this it tends to slightly undergo underdo the line and then all of a sudden it just goes straight off into space but it should be crash should be able to launch this by hand I mean, by now it should be like that. There you go. It's telephoto. Now, I wonder if the narrow angle view helps spot a landing spot, like on the moon or somewhere. That is a really interesting idea. Oh no! G go away! <laughs> Phaos is here! Uh <laughs> You're right, Vaios. How are you doing? Have you come to uh, curse my rocket with your your explosive powers? No, my rocket's so well built it's going to survive Vaios. That's the plan. She says. So, uh, nothing bad happened. I feel a change in the wind. I swear, like, uh, have has Crash given you like a back door into his save? So when you turn up, you can just type a command, and all of a sudden, bits of his rocket start falling off. Yep, stage set is coming up in one minute nineteen eighteen. Hang on, another second will go by in a moment. Seventeen. Yeah, we're running on slow time. Yeah. I haven't had a problem with stage steps on this so far. Oh, I wish I hadn't have said that. I can't get the boost of burn time to show up for me. Uh, that's down here. One minute and five seconds. Uh, Mech Jab and Kerbal both got it wrong. Oh, okay. Um, I don't seem to be having a problem with Mech Jab. On the Shuriken, yeah. Um, that's weird. <laughs> it's because you're accursed. That's why, Veos. Uh, maybe. Maybe. I don't know if these have got cores on them. I don't think they do. I don't know. No, I don't think they do, actually. Hmm. Very strange there. Very strange. Oh, crud. Oh, no. I forgot to re press the record button for... Hang on. I'll press record now and I'll film an... on. No, record. It won't do it. What? This is not a problem I want to have. This is your fault, Veos. There we go, game's back. Oh, game lag. Hoo hoo, that's a bit untidy. Come on. Wow. Uh uh. Uh 
Everything's gone a bit wrong. Help! <laughs> they sure haven't blown the rocket up. You blew my computer up. <laughs> and we're back, I think. Yeah, there we go. Whew. That was a little bit nerve-wracking. I had to turn the recording off. What? No, this says I'm offline. I'm not offline. Oh, have I ended my stream? Am I still live, guys? Yeah, I'm still live. No, um, I hit the record button. And... Yeah. It, it decided to screw me over instead. Anyway, twenty second, uh, twenty seven seconds till uh, booster burnout. Just when <laughs> shit starts to go my way. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, I can still see you with thirty two seconds remaining on the booster. Can you? Oh, I'm at twenty three, so I might be a bit ahead. There might be some stream lag or something. We'll see. Anyway, should we get a nice view for this booster set? Should we go from the front? What is that? Wah! I don't like it. I got scared. That's a weird graphic graphical glitch, isn't it? Okay, um, computery, computery speak. Computery speak, I, I don't know. Uh, stream lag of 10 seconds is typical even for Cosmo. Alright, okay, with his NASA servers to run this thing. I mean, Wookie, you've got the save. Did you try to ever actually load the save rather than just loading it in, um... Hey, hi, Nimit, hiya. It's scatter atmospheric interface. Oh, okay. Well, I wish it would stop doing that. Anyway, two, one, zero. Booster sap. Uh, why did that come apart at the same time? I'm just going to hold the camera here because this is a cool shot. Whoa. Okay, that was kind of cool. Uh, this monstrosity. Um, crap, I need to actually pilot this monstrosity as well. Dear Lord, what's going on? Uh, we need to go minus nine. When it will in a minute. So, this monstrosity is going to a very hot place. Yes. Yes, it is. Oh, scatter has been really weird. Yep. With a lander. And a... And a... And a rover. And it's got a nuclear engine. And it's big. Anyway, orbits. Why are you not... Do what I want you to do. I was going to go for a 250 by 250 and you're going to overshoot that. Slow. Yeah, no, no, indeed. Though it's got the DV to deal with that. I massively overstocked the Delta V on this thing. Which I did for Crash because he said, you know, make sure there's some margin for error. And you know how he likes to error. Okay. So we got three minutes to Apple Apsis. Burn time of two minutes and one. Hmm. Hmm. And that's now dropping. Okay, so let's go back to zero. 
Uh, using all the Cosmo available tech, uh, I've had to unlock some parts. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't me, I swear. Yeah, I'm sure it was. I've had to unlock some parts, um, but there are parts that he's already unlocked, he just hasn't bought yet. So, like, for example, the nuke, nuke engine I'm using is the Nerva 2. He's got it unlocked, but he hasn't bought it yet. This is Cosmo save game, like, we could go and have, like, have, a, have a route round if you wanted. But, um... Yeah, it costs... The cost is 420-something K? Anyway. Okay. Minus five. And ten seconds later it does that. Okay, that's going a bit high. We'll go more. Minus nine. I'm going to start bringing this down. I want 250 by 250. Is that not coming down yet? Yes, it is. There we go. Let that tick down. We've got three minutes time to apoapsis. Eh, I'm okay with that. But yeah, as you saw with the, with the guidance line, it's like a little bit under, a little bit under, a little bit under. It goes mental. So, yeah. Okay. Is that rising again? It is. God damn it. Minus... 12. Drop, darn you. I need to drop 5k off my Apple Apsis. <coughs> oh, I had an idea for you, Wookie. I gave it a little try and I couldn't really get it to work, but you might be able to. Oh, it's still going, so minus 15. Um, hey, Wookie, how about this? Uh, Mark III version cockpit with the Mark III 16-man uh, um, passenger cabin, but built in the style of the dinosaur. So with some little wings and a little booster and uh oh, ragey rage 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 yep yeah, rage yeah yeah scorpio yeah it's expensive thank you for the follow really appreciate it uh i'm not watching what i'm doing here oh my god i've overshot this quite a lot never mind it's all good all good in the hood Drop, darn you, drop. Yeah, I could do. But then it gets the ascent guidance upset and I might as well just run full throttle. And I'm going to have to shut that down in a moment. Uh, it's fine, whatever. We'll just go for... Uh... Whoa, it's going a bit mad. Whoa! What are you doing? No! No! Okay. I mean... It's up there. It's got 1,000 metres left in the tank, so that's some um, uh, extra for Cosmo. That's cool, but where does Cosmo need to send 16 astronauts? Well, technically, it'd be 16 plus... You can fit, what, four in the Mark III cabin? Three? It'd be a lot. Um, I don't know. Habitation on Mars. Massive habitation on Mars. Or uh, a, a giant space ship that's been built in orbit using things like this to lift up 200 ton things that could then go to titan or wherevs anyway let's let's get rid of that let's blow this okay i didn't mean for that to happen but never mind let's get these out Yeah. Though, I have to say... Oh, gosh. 
That's a bit close, isn't it? Blow me. I have to say though, tiny little Nerva engine, massive tank. <laughs> right, let's turn on the RCS. Uh, well, let's have a look at the map and see what what we could do. I haven't really like launched. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I'm sure we can think of reasons to do all sorts. Eh, I think I'm just going to point along the prograde curve and uh, prograde. Now watch this RCS struggle. <sighs> slow down, slow down. <laughs> Whew. Hello, Moon. I have to say, I'm pretty chuffed that this has held in as well as it did during launch. I didn't think that was going to be a thing. Why are these going? Uh, uh, stop! Do later game RPO to ever call for like large packs of tourists? I don't think so. Where is this going? What has happened to this? It's just spoiling out of control. Maybe it's just cannot control its mass. Any ideas for better RCS? Uh, do they call for ullage? They do not. Though they have a very weird thing which I want to show you. There is something very weird about them. Anyway, I need to stop these from draining their tanks. Stop! Uh Where's the locked? Uh, stop blasting all your NTO into space. Uh. Yeah, I tried that, but just like four wasn't enough. I tried just doing four, but it just was not enough. Where are you getting fuel from? I thought that's that's all the tanks, isn't it? Aha! Stop! There we go! <sighs> True! Oh, I forgot that we haven't got persistent rotation on this. Yeah, everything on this is... Another moonshot program for Cosmo be a giant reusable upper stage a la BFS. First stage recovery is a no, but Mega Shuttle would be cool. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, you know? And the challenge of doing it diner style would be quite interesting, I thought. So, what, you're just not going to point at that node, are you? Come on. Come on, you can do it. Also, another problem is, although this says it's got a gimbal limit, it doesn't have much gimbal at all. So, watch this. This is weird. It is only liquid hydrogen, yes. And as you can see, there is 
like zero boil off these radiators negate all of the boil off which is pretty sweet so we'll go full throttle get the engine and we will activate the engine now watch the thrust right activate engine oops didn't mean to do that thrust is at zero thrust is at 0 0.1 and it's not just that it's going slow thrust is at 0 0.2 With four seconds has gone past thrust is at 0 0.4 Hey, welcome back, Pulsified. Thrust is at 0 0.6. Now, what, six or seven seconds has gone past? Thrust is at one. Thrust is now coming up. You'll see in a minute, it starts burping. Come on, do the burps. See that little, little burst of something? Little burst of something. Little burst, little burst, and here comes the thrust. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Weird. The spool up time on that is so slow. But cool rocket plume, eh? But yeah, the spool up time on that is just ridiculous. So yeah, nuclear engines. Woohoo! Mmm, radiation. Uh, time to spin up the turbo pump. Yeah, but the spool up time on it is like I think like tw I I I worked it out the uh, the other day. It's something like ten to twelve seconds before the thrust will come up. So you know how Crash likes to miss his nodes, and also this is a thirty-minute burn. It looks like it's farting a nebula. Kind of, yeah. I'm also excited by the possibilities unlocking uh, NTRs will give. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty fun. But th this one is the Nerva 2. And it's a good engine. It's a damn fine engine. It's got no gimbal on it though. Which is always an issue. Like... I'm telling the RCS to hold prograde and they're struggling. I'm just going to tell it to stay stable. Should be a little bit better. How much RCS fuel have we used? About a quarter of a tank. I like the way these radiators make it look like a proper, you know, the radiators and then the red plume make it look proper like, you know, Dan Dare space rockets, <laughs> you know, kind of, if you squint. Uh, should be pretty stable now with that the atmos beneath you. Yeah, seems to be, seems to be pretty stable. I mean, I should be able to do this. There you go. I see you left the field of view nice. Um, how do you mean I left it? I, I oh oh I, I I left it on. Yeah, I thought it. I just thought it it it, it looks better. Yeah, I I just thought they looked like. You know, Dan Dare style, nineteen fifties space ship. Yeah, you know, this looks like a nineteen fifties rocket. <laughs> it, it's a bit tubby and it's got fins, even though it's in space. Although they're radiators, and it's got a strange engine with a weird plume. I love it. I'm kind of in love with it a little bit. What the heck is that? What? Is that? 
what is that? That's a weird thing. Okay. Well, radio. Uh, ambient lights turned up, so. Hmm. Don't know. Oh well. Anyway, back to Space Rockety. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Von Braun would be getting wet over this. Ah, oh, look at that. There we go. Uh, that is the moon. Oh, I see. Oh, it's the moon, but through my plume. And Scatterer being dumb. Yeah. Why is Scatterer doing stuff in space? I don't know. But yeah. It's, it's, it's an interesting thing. There's a silly reverse fade with a hard line on the edge. It's one of the reasons I don't have it. Because I know my save would struggle hardcore to deal with something like Scatterer. Oh, I'm also still doing that. Why is it wibbling around so much? Oh, yeah, because I'm in times four. Good, good gosh. Yeah, I don't have a fancy graphics card, unfortunately. Uh, there's a nuclear engine that has 1,800 ISP and 400, and it has the RS config. This has um, 800 kilonewtons, and its ISP is 850. It's pretty, pretty not bad. Uh, you change the SRAS back to just directional. Yeah, I, I'm trying to get stability assist just to hold a... Uh, yeah, no, I know it's not programmed anymore. I've changed it just to hold a uh, uh, direction. But it's just like, how much is it wobbling around to the wall? That's a bit weird. How much is it wobbling around just to try to hold this direction? Weird. I know. I yeah, know, I'm inefficiently burning. How dare I? Eh, it was just an engine test anyway, to be honest, and a staging test. I need to test the rest out. In fact, I might kill this engine here and not wait the 26 minutes. And then uh, show you how all the rest of it works. Yeah, let's do that. We'll pretend that's all the burn. Okay, so next stage is that. Okay, no. That. Now we zoom all the way in, and we zoom in, and we zoom in, and we zoom in. Yeah, it's something I need to work on. How are we going to uh, make this bad boy stable? Come on. Come on! So we'll unlock the tanks. Yeah, no, I'm sure it probably could do that. Oh, no, hang on. Are these locked? Yeah, disengage their locks. Yeah, no, this is definitely just a... a, a no. Engine test. Otherwise, I, I wouldn't have just done it off prograde. I would have actually built some sort of node. This is just a simulation. Why are you not working? Disengage lock. Disengage lock. 
Here we go. Because it's going to go quite far out, I thought it needed big radars. Oh, fucking hell, that tank behind me. <laughs> Let's turn around and say, Whoomph. Just needs one of them movie sound effects, you know? Also, why are you struggling to hold? You were holding fine before. Uh, go pro grade. I know you're off axis, but come on. Whoops. <laughs> He's like, this show's supposed to be about me, not about this stupid little stage. So this is going to be my comsat around whichever body we go to. Um, like I say, designed for Mercury, but can go to any of the non-atmospheric worlds. Um, I'm also planning on putting a uh, scan sat on there, but I completely and utterly forgot about it until just a minute ago. Um, and I think that definitely looks like a commsat, don't you? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, gonna burn some fucking... What's it called it now? Some uh, MMH and NCO. Let's do so. Uh, throttle up. And burn. Ooh, that's got a bit of wobble on it, hasn't it? Hmm, that might be something we need to fix. Though, I don't know, it seems to be holding okay at the moment. Why do you say you've got nine minutes left? Yeah, fuel cross feed false, so it can't take anything from that. Eh, either way. Uh, so how long would the fuel in the nuclear stage? I tested it for three hours and didn't lose a single uh, molecule of hydrogen fuel. So, I don't know. The radiators really negate boil off. Like, really well. Really, really well. I'm sure there will still be some boil off, but what I'm looking at using, the the way I'm looking at this mission going, is you would use the DN6 to get to orbit, you would then use the nuclear engine to break orbit, send you off to your target. Uh, there is plenty of sunlight at Mercury, but because I'm making this capable to go to anywhere, I wanted it capable to go to places where there is no mercury. So, no, nope, this is entirely uh, powered by uh, RTGs. Eh, that's enough of that engine. Let's cut that down. And... Why isn't that in the next stage? It should be. Okay. So, next stage. Should have unlocked and done that first. Unlock, 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 unlock. So this should have enough, basically this has got enough juice in it at Mercury to slow us down to a stop uh, and put us in orbit around Mercury. This has enough juice in it to deorbit and land, in theory. 
It's... I know I should set a target for these, but it's just a test, and I'm just like making sure that everything moves correctly. So that will be the lander. I should put some smaller comms on that lander as well. So that will be the lander. Very basic. Fuel tank, RTGs, relays for these when you're at Mercury might be able to just about reach home. Okay, let's just... Yeah, that now doesn't wobble around. Let's check, like, moving it. Yeah, that's pretty well held in there. I'm impressed. It's plenty agile. It's quite well balanced, I thought. Oh, just flip round to retrograde and... Okay, overshot it by quite a lot. Show me up now. But I, 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 I reckon Cosmonaut will be able to land that, you know? Definitely reckon that's landable. And then... Let me unlock this. And unlock this. Come on. And I don't know if this will work without me being landed, but in the VAB it works. Why aren't you doing anything? Okay. Uh, it's moving that and there and that there, but that's the deploy mechanism. And then you'll be able to just Boop, drop it off. Oh dear God. What have I done? <laughs> H! Get away from it. And on here we've got the usual bank of science. Uh, some lasers to fire at the rock. Oh look, they came up. They're red in the, um, oh, they are red, okay. Uh, there's a light bulb. Little cycloptic. A hydrogen data thing. A, it's basically uh, repeatable science. Force setting on that decoupler is zero. Because I just want it to just drop. It'll almost be on the ground, but it, uh, it'll be, you know, like, a little bit up. Come on. Where's this? Nope, no solar panels on the rover, because it's not going to be any usefulness if we're at IO. So the rover is RTG powered. It has a pair of RTGs. And I've tested the rover extensively, and it's really hard to tip. With this configuration, this, this this almost circular configuration, very hard to tip. Well, at least on 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 the Earth. And very manoeuvrable as well. Not very fast. But it, it works, and it's simple. But yeah, that, that's basically what I've been working on. I've got a lot of work to go and a lot of things to do, but yeah, so far. I believe it should be okay. These don't generate these don't the RTGs in here don't tend to generate heat so 
Yeah, this is what I thought. You land it on somewhere where a couple of biomes are meeting. You get a bit of biome science. Everything's repeatable science. It's all works because like there there are other science things, but uh, about seven hundred k should be fine. Should be fine. I haven't actually tested it there. I suppose we, that's a good idea. We could do a test uh, from, you know, above Mercury down. That's a good idea, actually. So, uh, where's the test thing? I don't know. Revert flight. Revert to vehicle assembly. So, back to old me, or new me, however this works. And, um, yeah, it looks like we've got to solve a bit of a problem with moving this giant nuclear stage around. And, um, and not, not only just getting it to turn, but uh, getting it to hold a node. Uh, I feel like if you're doing a 32 minute burn, then holding the node is probably quite an important thing it needs to be able to do. And as it was, it just was not holding it in any way that was was accurate or good enough. So we start off just looking at different RCS options, uh, seeing if there's any more powerful RCS or um, what we could do there. Maybe looking at extending it. We all thought about putting it on robotic arms. Um, there was a call for reaction wheels, but unfortunately in RP0, Reaction wheels have a much more realistic um, effect. So I decided to have a little experiment with an idea, and that was to make an RCS block out of RCS blocks. That would have incre increased our uh, number of thrusters pointing in each and every direction. There's me grabbing the tank again. A little bit fiddly here. So we'll have another go with a bigger, uh, a, a bigger pylon. And there we go, one, two, three, and I think I attach four or five pretty easily. And yes, this would very much increase our RCS, but also, by golly is it ugly. Wasn't happy with that very ugly uh, um, uh, uh, setup. And on top of that, the part count would have gone up by quite a lot. Um, we also had a little discussion about using different RCS fuels. Uh, we decided that Aerozine N2O, is, sorry, not Aerozine, uh, um, yeah, N2O and well, whatever the one that is that Crash uses is probably the best to stick to. I think it might be Aerozine and N2O. Okay. Uh, we then started looking at things like using a pair of RL10s as vernier engines. Um, initially, a, a good thought, but uh, my my thoughts were the weight penalty and the f having to carry your liquid oxygen. It's going to end up adding a lot of weight, and that's going to affect our DV figures pretty hard. Um, you know, we did have some extra DV to play with, but I just I didn't feel like that was a, a, a go no go idea. We had a few look at a couple of other engines, but um, couldn't find anything suitable. Um, we were looking for a a, a a LOX engine that also had multiple restarts and so then I came to this idea and so the idea was these engines have got a three degree gimbal so if we had a pair of them put them as far apart as possible then that would add to the turning torque and on top of that you would have the power of two instead of the power of one and I'll be honest um, I wasn't very confident that this setup would work <laughs> and neither were chat um, yeah, it, it, this, this didn't seem like it would work. Uh, we'll see in a moment if it does. And there's me popping everything back on. Sort of the size of the fairing out, because it's a little bit shorter now. And, um, yeah, we'll get back onto the launch pad in just a moment. And give this a test. Now, for these tests, we're just launching straight vertically up, so we get a nice loft time, go up to 350, 500 kilometers or say, uh, get some nice loft time, and then test the second stage out to see how it fares, holding nodes, turning, etc, etc. 
So another lift, another launch. Um, I was also getting used to using the alt zoom camera. Very much enjoy that. I'm going to be using that a lot more in the future. I feel like it just gives that like helicopter shot or uh, drone shot or something like that. It, it has that feel of a uh, slightly more interesting camera than just pointing straight at it. So definitely going to use that a lot in the future. And then we have a separation. A little bit weird, but it's fine. Everything's separated. And um, yeah, take a few moments here to get all of the engines uh, onlined correctly. And away we go. And uh, this is me trying to just hold hold a direction to begin with. And it seems to be doing that. Uh, we, we requested it to go to uh, prograde. Um, turn the engines off for a moment and just let it drift round. Very, very slow. But it gets there. Use a little bit of uh, the old freeze time method to help us out a little bit. And then we get the engines running again. And lo and behold, although I didn't think this was going to work, and chat didn't think this was going to work, as you can see here, although it's not ideal, it is holding the node. Okay, it does bounce around the node a fair amount, but it's it's holding the node. And uh, yeah, so as a solution, this works, just not great. <coughs> oh, sorry about that. Um, so yeah, we uh, we we were all very much surprised that this kind of worked, um, and I was very pleased. Uh, yeah, so there we go, burning back down. And uh, it was it was about this time that Wookie informed me that he had had a look into all the different engines, and may have found something interesting. Uh, these are the RD, uh, I think, 385s, something like that. RD856s, there we go. Um, it did take me a while to find them, so we go back to the single engine configuration. And then here we go, this is me searching for these RDs. Um, and I didn't realise they were the uh, little orange radio engines. This is me missing it 50 times. There we go. And we get some of those. The unfortunate problem with these engines is they only have one ignition. So we obviously need four for gimbal to have the uh, directional stability in every direction, um, including roll control. Uh, but the solution we came to was using multiple sets of four. So, I mean, did, did, did that would work. But we were worried that Crash, being Crash and how Crash is, he may accidentally just activate all the engines at the same time so not sure if this is going to be our final solution um, but it is a good one and as you see as you'll see in a bit it, it, it was it was fairly efficient so here we go just working out fuel tank sizes and how I'm going to do this and working out uh, sort of a little setup that would work it was nice and simple getting back some of that delta V and give those engines some fuel there we go and uh, I'm sure we bolt up back on and go out for a test on suit oh there we go there's a second set of four being bolted on there's some uh, radiators Ah, this is where I came across an interesting bug regarding the um, RCS screen. As you'll see in just a moment, I'll move the R RCS screen, and the moment you do that, you can't get rid of it. This is a bug that's apparently plaguing RP0, but also seems to... I tried this at RP1, and it had a similar odd behavior. So, yeah, it's something that, that, that is persistent. Here we go, we'll just pop that fair and on up there and get back on the launch pad and here we are launching back up to uh, back up to space and fast forward time a bit because all we're interested in just getting there as uh, quick as possible and in just a moment 
we will have detach okay just another moment there we go and it's a really clean detach we use the RCS to pull ourselves out of the fairing very happy with that detach I, I, I do love a nice uh, you know pulling yourself out the interstage there goes our radiators or dander fins as I like to call them now and then a uh, little faffing around with the engines to make sure that we had only four lit and then I accidentally put all of them on <laughs> so we have to turn four of them off there we go excellent and we have ignition of those uh, vernier thrusters and ignition of the uh, nerva uh, I straight away ask it to do uh, prograde and as you can see it went straight for it and then held that node beautifully so this is a really really good situation a uh, really really good solution to the problem testing a bit of roll here a bit of roll here a bit of roll back in the other direction so this solution works very very well um, and I was very very happy with it the only problem we have is the possibility of crash accidentally uh, using up all eight or as we decided later on we were going to put two more sets of four on um, that does increase the part count quite a lot as well so that's a bit of a problem but um, yeah this solution worked really well and as long as crash doesn't make a mistake then it should be fine uh, we'll end up with effectively four ignitions on the Nerva even though technically it's got like 30 uh, we'll only have four ignitions that have the verniers but that should be enough to you know do uh, do your burns and uh, any correction burns and capture burns and whatnot um, but talking of um, those those radiators I was very much surprised how well they worked although we haven't tested this out for a very very long time I think the longest simulation I've done is three hours in that three hour period we didn't suffer any boil off so it does look like those radiators negate boil off okay and this is us back into the VAB and um, the next idea we had was to go back to RCS and to use these thrusters <coughs> excuse me sorry about that um, yep so we use these uh, three port thrusters and uh, fiddling around with them a little bit and seeing how they work as I've never used these thrusters before and Wookie helped me out an awful lot here um, he was trying to explain how they uh, um, thrust and it looks like then it's not as simple as the thrust comes straight out at them it comes out at a bit of an angle which caused some quite interesting problems see so my initial idea is just to put them back to back and maybe give them a tilt so they point directly out and then a large thruster for for um, roll control or put a pair of those on for roll control this is my initial idea but uh, Wookie helped me out and explained a few things um, yeah this is me showing like so we would have maximum thrust on the radial and there we go and then I was just gonna stack these up like three times and that's me continually grabbing the tank that was a little frustrating but you know this happens uh, Wookie was saying if you put two of them side by side uh, he was explaining how you can get the tangential thrust from the sides so yeah this is what we will then have started working on um, and this is the solution uh, on my Saturday stream we're going to look into a bit harder and see how well we works we weren't able to test fly at this point it was getting quite late um, and then I had to be up early the next day for a job interview so that was uh, there was a bit of a time crunch so I wasn't able to test this idea um, we, we fiddled around quite a lot trying to work out how to get this to work properly so there we go that was like a, a fairly nice ish solution that's me just using a structural element to help get it directly in the middle 
and yeah it looked quite nice so I think in a moment we do exactly the same at the top we get rid of our old setup and use a structural element to centralize them a little bit when we move them because it's easy to snap to zero but then you have to move them slightly off so here we go we move that one that way that one that way lovely just fine-tune that a little bit pop pop there we go pop pop lovely lovely and get rid of the structural element and then basically um, at this point we were just sort of rough drafting ideas so the idea was then just to copy it down and make these extra large thruster blocks um, we, 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 we did see a slight issue here that uh, one of the sets of blocks would just be thrusting in each direction which wouldn't be helping us and when you went to go and switch that off it switched the other ones off because of the times four symmetry so it looked like we were going to have to put these thrusters on one by one so this is me just trying to find a way of doing this I was thinking of using a secondary tank and be able to just pop those on the side and then obviously I'll move the tank in uh, and be able to shrink or expand to get those uh, thrust arrows looking um, parallel um, and, and this is the solution that I'm going to build on my next stream so just I think there was just a lot more fiddling around with this and testing you know thinking about this and uh, yeah this, this this is what we're going to go with. So I'm going to take this moment to thank Crash for letting me take over his stream. I very much enjoyed doing the streaming. Um, I've also, the, the amount of support that I've got from the Discord community has been amazing. Um, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't have predicted or fathomed it. It was excellent. So I just want to take this moment to say thank you to you to watching. And thank you to everybody who turned up. Um, I do hope I can do more of this sort of thing in the future. Um, and and yeah. So I'll just leave you with the last few shots of me fiddling around with stuff. And that will be that. Thank you very much for watching. Well, that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much, especially to Kat, for covering for me this week. I really appreciate it. There will be links to her Twitch channel down in the description below. I highly recommend you go check it out. Uh, she's running an RP1 series uh, over there currently, which has just been a whole lot of fun to watch. So thank you so much for hanging out, everybody. I really do appreciate it, and I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later. I feminized my rocket with a nipple. That's where all the gubbins is stored. <laughs>